Okay, so next um, we're going to move over to uh, Philip Van Kempen, uh, who's a PhD student and Chair of Electronic Design Automation at the Technical University of Munich. He's working in electrical system level group of uh, the EDA chair, uh, developing solutions for deployment challenges related to extreme edge AI applications, uh, which is TinyML. So thanks, Philip, and take it away. Thank you for that uh, introduction. So my passion is with Five and um, embedded machine learning. And um, this talk about me with Five and N um, is structured as follows. I will first, uh, first I would like to motivate the need for efficient neural network inference libraries on, uh, in the tiny ML field. Then I will show some implementation details and hopefully interesting uh, benchmark results. And finally, uh, in the conclusion, I will mention some of the challenges we had to deal with and also uh, tell a bit about the future work. So uh, most of the t talks, uh, as of the previous talks, have been focusing on how to optimize the machine learning workloads or models and how to improve the targets to be able to run neural networks efficiently. But, uh, uh, and in, in addition, um, oh, sorry, um, in the, uh, unfortunately, there, uh, unfortunately, there has not been uh, a talk about TinyML on Risk 5 yet, but uh, there's actually a lot of going on in that field. Uh, in the academia and in industry. And uh, with all these, these optimizations in hand, we have to make sure that we can make use of the emerging model architectures and the emerging uh, target hardwares in our deployment pipeline. So here's a short, uh, um, short summary of the machine learning workloads we need to deal with in TinyML. This talk will focus on only uh, the autoencoder and the convolutional uh, yeah. and dense neural networks. And um, this will, will also do only uh, quantized in inference, so no on-device on learning. F for picking the right architectures to do embedded machine learning, you have to choose between CPU only, vector processors, or you can uh, use specialized hardware accelerators for, uh, for your uh, embedded machine learning. Since this talk will be focusing on ZIMD on RISC-V, we have three targets uh, we want to uh, compare later. The baseline is a 32-bit RISC-V core with support for integer multiply and com compressed instructions. Then uh, we have the RISC-V vector extension which has been ratified about one and a half years ago. This, is this one is operating in a length agnostic fashion and performing super words in the instructions. Because that might be very resource and, uh, or implementation uh, heavy, there's a subset of the, uh, of the vector extension called ZVE32X, which uh, uh, minima uh, minimizes the the uh, set of instructions, uh, of uh, the set of vector instructions to a minimum to be also able to use the vector extension on constrained embedded devices. The RISC-V packed extension, on the, on the other hand, is uh, performing subwords in the instructions. This uh, actually means that on the 32-bit targets, you can choose between two, only two vectorized data types. Either you can perform four, eight uh, operations at a time, or you can perform two 16-bit operations at a time. This uh, extension is still in development and will hopefully be finished or ratified by the end of the year. In the field of the um, uh, RISC-V vector extension, there's a lot of stuff going on in the research field, uh, in the research area, as well as in the industry. And we are especially happy to see uh, that recently some uh, open a uh, course implementing the embedded vector extension uh, have showed up. Um, for uh, deploying TinyML models onto uh, microcontrollers, we have previously uh, uh, used TF-Lite 
for microcontrollers. It should be well known here. It was mentioned a lot these days. And it's kind of the industry standard and supported by a lot of vendors. On the other hand, we also there's also TVM, which is pretty interesting for us because it follows a, a compiler-driven approach, which uh, uh, provides us a, a, la a large degree of freedom to perform op optimizations and target-specific auto-tuning. To be able to run TVM programs on microcontrollers, there's a sub-project called MicroTVM, which uh, we use a lot. Now we have our frameworks, for example, TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers uh, and TVM. We have some model, and we have a target, which might be an ARM or with five uh, architecture. Now, uh, how do we get our machine learning program? There are a few things we can, we can uh, for example, do. The uh, first one would be to use these frameworks to generate generic C or C++ code. This might perform OK for, this, for scalar ARM or with five architectures. But uh, we, can, uh, we probably run into problems if we all want to make, sure, uh, make use of these SIMD features these architectures provide. This is why ARM has proposed or uh, implemented the CM this NN library, which, which was mentioned this morning, to, uh, to provide efficient neural network inference kernels for uh, ARM Cortex-M devices implementing the DSP or ARM's vector extension. Uh, and to make these uh, kind of improvements possible for RISC-V, we propose new risc VNN, our own neural network uh, inference library for RISC-V. So the design idea for new risc VNN was to implement a kernel library uh, with efficient neural network uh, uh, operators to be running on with five CPUs. Our baseline is ARM's uh, CMSIS NN implementation. And because that one is used by a lot of third party tools, we have uh, made, uh, we made sure that our interface is uh, consistent with the one provided by CMSIS NN. We currently support three different modes. The first scalar mode is just using the uh, same uh, the same implementations as used in the scalar uh, version of CMSIS NN. While for the vector and packed extension, we have added and optimized uh, kernels you, uh, using C-level intrinsic functions instead of inline assembly calls. The set of operators uh, co uh, contains all the common stuff from convolutions, activations functions, pooling, etc., with the recent addition being the support for LSTM networks. Since this is uh, an inference only and uh, QNN only, uh, only uh, library, the only supported data types are 8 or 16 bit integers. Here are some words regarding the infrastructure of the project. We can proudly say that we are able to run and pass the same unit tests. Uh, as ARM is running in the CMDIS and in repository. Also, we provide integration for the machine learning frameworks TF Lite for microcontrollers and MicroTVM, as well as for our own TinyML benchmarking and deployment tool ML on MCU. Of course, we also feature the usual CI CD stuff and uh, have uh, an extensive user and development documentation available. So uh, let's talk about results. The used benchmark is the uh, ML Perf Tiny set, which has been discussed a lot yesterday. The only thing I would like to mention is that the, uh, that the uh, first three uh, models are mostly typical CNNs or depth-wise CNN models, while the anom anomaly detection model is a DNN. So uh, it only has fully connected or dense layers. Um, our benchmarking setup is as follows. We uh, have uh, generated all our benchmarks on Spike, which is an instruction set simulator available for the RISC-V ISA. And this one supports a lot of extensions, including the RISC-V packed and vector extension. The programs have been compiled using LLVM14, 
uh, for the scalar and vector versions and using a draft build of uh, the RISC-V GCC for the fact version because that one is uh, currently not supported by the LLVM. And all of the benchmarks have been generated using ML and MCU. So this slide uh, compares the scalar version of new risk VNN and CMSIS NN with the reference kernels of TF Light Micro. It can be seen that it's an obvious choice to use a, a neural network, uh, an optimized uh, kernel library, instead of the un unoptimized TF Light Micro reference kernels. If we only compare CMSIS NN and USB NN here, we can see that the difference are very marginal and uh, less than 10%. Uh, yes. And now uh, we only consider USB NN and want to see how the vector extension in two different configurations and how the packed extension uh, uh, performs compared to the scalar version of new risk VNN. Let's first look at the packed extension. Here we can get a speed up of between 2 and 2.5 percent, uh, uh, a speed up factor of uh, between 2 or 2.5. While for the vector extension with a relatively small vector length of 64 bits, we can get roughly the same results. If we increase our vector length to be 1024 uh, 1, bits, the speed up depends on the used model. So we can expect something between 3.5 and 11 uh, times faster inference compared to the scalar version. Um, the previous results have been generated using new risk VNN with TF Light Micro. But since I already uh, mentioned that news VNN can also uh, be used with, T uh, with TVM. The results for the, for the scalar, vector, uh, vector, and packed extension should be mostly the same as the ones for TF Light Micro because TVM is uh, basically offloading all of our machine learning operators to the Muris VNN library. What I have added here at the left are two bars. Uh, one of them is what you can get when you use TVM out of the box without performing special optimizations. While the second group of bars is uh, the performance I got by telling TVM to uh, transform the used layouts for the kernel and the data from T uh, TF Lite's default layout, Janet's last, to the Gen uh, Janet's first layout, or C uh, NCHW. In addition, we also used the TVM's auto-tuning feature to tune the used schedules on device to, uh, to improve the performance. What you, we, you can get here is a speed up of, uh, uh, you can uh, get twice as fast using uh, these optimizations with TVM, which uh, leads to roughly the same performance as our hand-optimized view with VNN library. How about memory, memory overheads? In terms of code size, you can expect new risk VNN to require between five or 10% more, more ROM, uh, not, not for the rates, only for the code size. Um, and uh, that kind of depends on the, on the used model. And in terms of RAM for TF Lite Micro, you cannot, you, you do not have to, uh, add overheads here because the RAM metrics are actually the same. And since TVM is currently not, not so good in terms of uh, having a, a good RAM usage, using new with BNN with TVM, you can expect an improvement in RAM usage. Uh, uh, the factor is uh, between 1.5 and three times. But uh, all these metrics should basically be equivalent to, to what you can achieve with CMSIS and N on ARM. So what are the challenges we had to deal with uh, implementing USB and N? First, for the vector extension, even if you have very long vectors available, you can often not make use of these long vectors due to the nature of some uh, layers in machine learning. Uh, models, for example, some convolutions which have limited channel length. So this is obviously a limitation, and also uh, 
CMS and N in USB and N can only operate on the channel's last layout. So you cannot improve, for example, the spatial locality by transforming to a different data layout. Uh, on the other hand, for the fact extension, you would expect to get an improvement uh, by a factor of four because the RISC-V fact extension can, can do dot products with 8-bit inputs. But uh, since, TF, uh, since uh, CMS and N and USB and N have to be compliant with the quantization scheme used by TF Lite Micro, you are forced to use 16-bit inputs. And uh, hence why this uh, expected speed up can only be roughly a factor of two. We also had to come up with workarounds to be bit exact with ARM. So uh, we have to emul emulate um, ARM's rounding mode at some places. And this of is, of course, costly in terms of, uh, of computation time. Finally, it's also not trivial to, in, uh, to stay in sync with the progress uh, uh, in the upstream repositories, because the folks at ARM are doing impressive work there. And we, of course, try to uh, keep up with the uh, supported operators, et cetera. We are currently working on improving the performance of the kernels, especially for the peer extension, even more. And we also want to, uh, uh, we are also currently adding support for RTL cores, for example, the Vicuna target, implementing the embedded vector extension to get realistic and cycle accurate performance results. In the future, we also would like to support hardware targets when they become available. <laughs> and we also thought about adding alternative rounding modes, uh, allowing you to trade off um, accuracy for an increased performance, if, if applicable. This is basically just a summary of the features of new SVNN. And if this library is interesting to you, it's av available open source on GitHub. Feel free to check it out. And we are happy about any feedback. And uh, if you run into problems, just make sure to open up an issue, and we will definitely help you out there. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Philip.